Hello. Okay, I think that I'm good. Just want to make sure. Mm. Yeah. All right. Hello. Okay, I think that I'm good. Just want to make sure. Mm. No, don't like the sound mm. of that. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Gosh, it doesn't matter um, how much I feel like I'm catching on, I still make the same mistakes. Hi, I'm Becky Bloat, Creative Memories Advisor from Newport News, Virginia. And if I can do this business, anybody can. <laughs> so um, thank you for tuning in today, despite all of my flaws. <laughs> um, so I am going to show you a multitude of ideas today using some new things. So um, this one, the dollop arch. I will also feature the flourish vine as well as the circle chain um, with the border maker. Um, and I will show you um, one with this one that most of you should have. This is an older one, Diamond Arch. If you don't have it, you know our punches don't stay around too long. So if you don't have this one, this is an all-time favorite. So you should probably get this one if you don't already have it. So um, let me go ahead and change my screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Again, thank you. Thank you for watching. Okay. All right. So let me get this a little bit out of the way. Um, so the dollop arch, this is a frame punch. All right. Frame punches look different than the other punches because they have indi indicators out here as well as indicators here of where to line things up with. All right. So frame punches are not something you should be afraid of. If you like our border punches, you will love these because you know what? They're border punches. These are border punches just like all the rest. But when they call it a frame punch, it just means it does more, okay? This one, if you've never used one before, I highly recommend it. Um, it doesn't tangle easy. It's a really easy one for your first one to try. So that's dollop arch. So what it can do, like I said, it can do a border. All right, so this is a border that I made. Um, I also played around with layering the borders to show you how pretty that is. So if I do two of them, look at how stinking beautiful that is. Actually, what I also did is I threaded a little strip through the little um, eyes of those little things up there to give another look. Let me flip it over and that way you can see the contrast a little bit better. OK, another thing that you may notice is that these are going to also look good skewed. So you could go like that. They're also going to look good if you connect them like this. So all kinds of different looks. Let me um, put this here for some contrast so that you can see that if you um, layered uh, this way, you could get another really cool look. So, so play with those. These are just straight borders. Now, what I mean by framing is um, it means it will go around a photograph. So for instance, if I had a four by four photograph, I would need a six by six piece of paper to frame. This is one that I used with another one of our um, frame punches called geometric. If you don't have this one, it's getting ready to come back, so no worries. But you can see that now if I had a four by four photo, it would fit perfectly in here for a really cool frame. So be on the lookout for geometric. I'm gonna demonstrate using a frame with a photo. You always um, pick two inches bigger on each dimension to get the right size. So this is a standard four by six photo that has not been trimmed. So I need, instead of four by six, add two, add two, get six by eight, all right? So I need a six by eight piece of paper for a four by six photo. So you just add two. It is very important that your dimensions are even dimensions. So if I had instead of five by seven, if I were to add two to each dimension, that would give me seven by nine. And um, that would not work. 
because it needs to be even. So instead of seven by nine, I would just go ahead and add another inch to get eight by 10. And then your mat will be bigger than you need, but it will still look good. All right, so here's the proper size. It looks ginormous, but no worries. We're gonna be cutting away. So what we now do, we're not doing a border, we're doing a frame. So every time, let's see what we have. Hmm. Uh, a walker. All right, um, she'll be um, out of the cul-de-sac in a moment. Poor thing, she loves our dog. She always waves at um, and they just wanna bite her. All right, so she'll be gone in just a second. She's really sweet too, and she's really tiny. I don't know why they're so scared of her. All right, so anyways, um, if you say to yourself every time you use this, am I framing or am I doing a border? If you're doing a border, same as all the other border punches, use these marks to do your border. But if you're framing, you're gonna use this mark here. All right, so I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna line my piece of paper up to that little nudge there. And I'm gonna do it just like normal. I'm gonna keep lining up. And the idea is you bet you don't want to um, you, you need notches at each end, because when you turn, this is the notch that you line up to the line. Dump that notch out because your notches are going to fall out on this one. And then line up again, being very careful not to go too far. All right, so don't get excited and go all the way through because then the frame process will not work. Mm -hmm. I guess y'all probably can hear my phone buzzing. I don't know who wants me this morning. Who knows? Sometimes um, it won't fall off, and if it doesn't, just tug it. It typically is um, is so close to the edge that it will fall right off. Okay, so now what you'll see is a beautiful frame for this. Is that lovely? All right. Um, might even add a really thin, thin, thin mat to that. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? Okay, so this is, is using dollop as a frame. So your geometric will work. There's a number of them that you probably have in your hands. The, new, the snowflake, which is on Wild Supplies Last, that is also a frame punch. So if you do not have the snowflake, it is getting ready to be gone. So that one might be one that you might wanna snag up. All right, so that was the first skill I wanted to teach you. All right, next. This is, um, let me show you what we're gonna do first so that you won't lose interest in me because this is super, super pretty. Look at that. Do you like that border? All right, so the way we're gonna do that one, let me grab a piece of paper. Um, you're gonna do, um, you're gonna do the first run normal. Now it's not a frame, right? This is clearly a border, all right? So if it's a border, I'm gonna use these marks instead. So I'm gonna do a quick border. Um, let me tell you a little trick about this one, too. All right. So um, when you line it up, all of these humps look exactly the same. So the sometimes you might think, oh, is it this one or is it this one um, that I lined it up to? If you start seeing paper come through that doesn't look cut, then you need to back up one. All right. Some of ours are a little easier to tell when you mash. Um, like on this one, I can see that this one's cut. So that's good. If I go one more out, I can see the, the uncut paper. So that means to back it up. Okay. I hope that helps. I am cutting this upside down. I don't know why I am though, because I think that you all can see it either way. Why am I being so hard on myself? I guess I wanted to show you that even you, this is really easy to use. Even, all right. Just saying there was no snags and that one I felt like a little snag but that's the first snag that I've gotten all right so there you go 
So now we've got that done. All right. And what I want you to do this time is save your scraps. Save these guys. OK. All right. Now what I want you to do is cut. All right. So line up your cut. I'm going to. I don't know which way you can see better. Line up your cut nodules at one and three quarters. One and three quarters. Let me make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Um, it would be a disaster if I did the wrong thing. Yep, one and three quarters. So two inches is here. One and three quarters is one line back. All right. So go one line back. Make sure all of your humps are lined up to there and then cut it off. Now, what you're going to find is now we have a piece that is is um, very risky to think that you're going to be able to drop that in and line it up properly. All right, you might be able to, but it's tricky. So whenever that happens to me, just flip it upside down for your first punch. So flip it upside down. I don't recommend using post-its. Post-its will work, and that's the way I used to teach it. But what post-its also do is they get gummy stuff stuck in here. And if you get gummy stuff stuck in here, that's when you start getting jams. So just go ahead and do your first punch upside down so you can see the window space here. We don't want that. We want to fill the space for our first punch. After the first punch, you do not have to turn it upside down. What you then can do is line up your patterns again. Don't want to see that. Don't want to see that rectangle come out. Is it beautiful? All right. So now we have that. Let me grab um, my contrast for you. All right, so now you've got a super pretty border as is. Um, but what I did on the page that I just showed you is I put these back in. So these are your trash. You can put them back in either um, the same direction as the paper, or if you like both sides, you could flip it to get a contrast. Is that lovely? All right, and then you just, you just put them very close together um, with your repo and you can barely even see those lines um, when you put it together. Is that pretty? All right, so that's that. Let me show you the completed page that I only briefly showed you a second ago. Oh, I'm getting messy over here. Is that super pretty? That one kind of came up. Super pretty, right? All right, so let me tell you what I got on this page. I am using the bundle from Our Moments. Um, this right here is um, stamping, the stamping blade that goes with your trimmer. Um, th these are embellishments um, from the laser borders. Um, so it's laser borders and laser embellishments in the same package. These are all stickers. Lots of flower stickers. This is actually a sticker that I've popped. You probably can't tell, but I have popped that to give it some rise with some of our foam pads. These cute little corners I've put on these really decorative mats that came from the mat pack. So this is a mat from the mat pack. This is a mat from the mat pack that I actually cut out the journaling part of it because I thought I would put a photo in there instead since I already had a little journal box here. I have another space for a photo here. Um, I just love this page. I hope you do too. Actually, I also put some of the gems that are in the um, the embellishment pack. All right, so we have embellishments and laser embellishments in that set. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you is Flourish Fine. So Flourish Fine is a border maker punch. Um, so Flourish Fine is absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful just the way it is i will show you how beautiful background noise for you while i cut okay so that's how pretty it looks 
Isn't that lovely? So this time we have a delivery from Amazon for our next door neighbor. So, you know, really he is a stranger. So I feel like that is a, you know, a reason to be barking, but he will be gone just a second. Cause you know, they just throw the packages at the porch and run, right? <laughs> all right. Bless all of you Amazon workers out there. All right. So what, so, so the border as it is, is just beautiful, but I wanted to show you another look. What if we cut it off? Um, I think I cut this off at two and one quarter. Two and one quarter. And when I say that, I want you to line your cut edges up at two and one quarter. Your cut edge at two and one quarter. I'm really actually grateful to hear both of my dogs barking. One of my dogs has been sick, very sick, actually, a kind of a disorder. And she's been very quiet these last couple of weeks because she just doesn't feel good. So I'm a little worried about her. Oh, what am I doing? So now it's really too too thin to put back in the border maker. Again, I'm not going to use a post-it. I've learned that that really is not the fastest way to do it. Um, just go ahead, just like we did with the border punch, do it upside down. Make sure you fill the window. Let's see if we can get a better view for you. See how now I see space. I don't want to see space. I want to fill that window up with my um, punch. And then once you do the first one, you just continue that process all the way down. Not hard at all. Get a really pretty look. All right, let me show you what that looks like. Is that pretty? Sorry about the dogs. Really, I am. For whatever reason, the Amazon man is now talking to my next door neighbor. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. Um, so now let me show you a really pretty layout that I've done with that. Isn't that pretty, huh? So this, what I have done with this one is I did the border that I just taught you. I have layered it with a laser border that came in the laser border set. You guys, Our Moments is the most beautiful line ever. Um, if you have not tried this one, it is just beautiful. This is a mat from the mat pack. I've added an oak tree, actually, from our new oak tree punch, because um, I thought this was kind of like a family page, and I think of family trees. Um, this was a mat from the mat pack. This was a laser embellishment from the same pack that this one came from. Are they not beautiful? I mean, if you don't want this whole collection, you should at least get the laser embellishments, but I think the collection is just stunning. All right. You like it? Yes, I love it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, um, next, what am I going to show you? Now I want to show you um, a hybrid, okay, where you use punches in combination. So what if I do, let's see. What if I do, um, actually, I'm not going to use this one yet, but this one will work. Going to use our dollop punch um, and it's not going to be a frame so i'm starting here not here i think i've showed you enough that i shouldn't have to keep showing you i'm just going to go quick here all right then what i would like you to do is come back through with your flourish vine and i am going to cut this at, let me see what I did. I think two and a quarter. Nope, actually I used two inches on this one. Two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. So I'm gonna put this, the, the cut edge on the two inch mark, cut. And we're gonna use our flourish vine upside down. Oh, this one's going to show up nice. So you can see space. I don't want to see space. Fill the hole. And then just go on down like that all the way to the end. So fill the hole. You don't want to see any space. All right. Is that super pretty? 
So let me show you a layout with that. So this is dollop vine with uh, actually a dollop arch with flourish vine. Huh, I just can't remember all these names. All right, so let me um, move this for a second. So what about this one? Is this super pretty? I think I made it like this, but it doesn't matter. All right, so this is the floor spine with the dollop arch. I've got a mat from the mat pack here, another mat over here. Oh gosh, um, embellishments. Oh gosh, this is a very busy morning. Now the trash truck is coming through. Oh, sigh. Sorry, you guys. You gotta love them. Um, here's my little um, jewel embellishments that I've added to a mat from the mat pack. I've been starting to add my pick my mat first because I like it to be a center point and then building around it, like picking my paper colors to coordinate with it. So I hope you love this page. I love, love, love it. All right. So that's that. I want to show you a couple of more. I did this one. Um, I did the, the dollop vine and then I came through. I cut it at two and one quarter on this one, two and one quarter. I always start with scraps. Don't trust my measurements. You know, I mean, I am right this time because I wrote them down. But sometimes I make them up. Um, not really. I really try to do it, do it right. All right. So, um, so now what I already did my first punch by filling in the window. I'll, I'll demonstrate that again. So, um, I, I two and a quarter. My first punch. I just fill the window and punch. And then after that, you can use your pattern on this one. So these are a little bit easier actually to do in combination than the border maker because you then have a pattern for your next ones. All right. Is that cool? So that's the um, rainbow arch with the dollop. All right. And one last combination I wanted to show you. This is mixing another border maker with a border maker. So on this one, let's grab the actual border maker. Oh my gosh. My floors hate me. All right. So I'm going to put this in border maker tray. I'm going to grab my border maker. And I'm going to do every other one, one, skip, skip one, one, skip one. And when I say skip, there's little nodules here that I'm skipping and skip one. All right. Change your cartridge to the new circle chain. Okay. Now that I'm almost done, I think almost everybody is out of my cul-de-sac. So things should be quiet after I leave you guys. All right. So as you can see, it's not falling off. And the reason it's not falling off is because some of these are um, chains. Our chains always fall off and some of them are not chains. So you can use it just the way it is, which actually I think is super pretty just the way it is. Or you can fussy cut away here. So um, with your, uh, your little precision scissors, just kind of go around quickly. Don't spend too much time on it because no one's going to be able to tell. Kind of like that to get this look. All right. So there you have it. And that, my friends, is all that I have. I am so glad that I can finish without any dogs barking. Um, I have my good. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. All right. Well, anyways, thank you for watching me. And I'm so sorry. Love you. Bye.